Welcome to this video. My name is Ewald de Meeren and today I would like to go into Fenaroli's second partimento using Moti del Basso. This partimento in A minor opens with a moto del basso that descends chromatically from the first to the fifth scale step. Fenaroli gives two possible ways of realizing this pattern. First, one could play it as a pattern with sevenths on the G sharp and the F sharp and sixths on the G and the F natural. Note that a diminished seventh on the G sharp is prepared by the sixth on the A. Secondly, Fenaroli also gives a more modern setting of this bass, resulting in a texture with an upper voice that ascends chromatically, moving in counter motion with the bass. While both versions obviously work well with quarter notes, half notes and syncopated half notes in the upper voices, one could decide on adding some smaller note values to the upper voices. This works quite well with the more old-fashioned 7-6 pattern, adding moreover imitation to the texture in the upper voices. Just two suggestions. First, one could repeat every tight note on the weak part of the beat, the simplest of techniques for creating complementary rhythm in the upper voices. Secondly, one could work, for instance, with a motif consisting of an 8 note followed by two 16 notes, which appears alternatively on each beat in the upper voices. Let's have a look now at the cadence in bar 3. When the smallest note values of this partimento are 8 notes, a nice way of realizing this 5-1 cadence is by using a motif that descends a third stepwise, a technique I already described in my discussion of Fenaroli's first partimento using Moti del Basso. This motif could start in the upper voice on B and be imitated by the middle voice one beat later, starting on E. With 16 notes as smallest note values, one could continue working with a motif consisting of an 8 note followed by two 16 notes. In this case, the upper voice could start on the downbeat of bar 3 with a suspension on C, which is prepared on the weak beat of bar 4 of the previous bar. The middle voice then imitates this motif on the second beat of bar 3 by starting with the suspension F which is prepared by a quarter note F on the first beat. As I have already explained in the video dealing with Fenaroli's first partimento, the type of 4-2 chord on a syncopated first scale step depends on the bass note following its resolution. A useful rule of thumb is that one should play a 4-2 chord with a pure 4th when that note is again a first scale step, and a 4-2 chord with an augmented 4th when it isn't. While this directive still applies when a syncopated first scale step occurs in a minor key, whether or not the resolution of that note is raised already hints at which type of 4th should be played just before it. When the resolution of the syncopated first scale step is raised, it functions as a leading note in the current key and will ascend to the first scale step, a bass progression which implies that a 4-2 chord with a pure 4th should be played on the suspension. When, however, the resolution of the syncopated first scale step is lowered, it does not function as a leading note and will usually require a 4-2 chord with an augmented 4th on the moment of suspension. Certainly, as is the case here, when the augmented 4th becomes the leading note of a new key. 
the D sharp, which is the augmented fourth in the 4-2 chord on the first beat of bar 4, becomes the leading note in E minor. Note that this new key is confirmed by the F sharp in the bass on the third beat, which starts a 2-5-1 cadence in that key. The cadence of bar 5 can be realized in a number of ways, in which the harmonic rhythm of the first half determines to a large extent the realization of the dominant notes. A partimento pupil started his training with three basic cadences, each of which is defined by the length of the dominant note. When the dominant note lasts only one beat, a cadenza semplice with one chord on the dominant note should be played. When the dominant lasts two beats, a different chord or sonority should be played on each beat of the dominant, a cadence they called a cadenza composta. Finally, when the dominant lasts four beats, a cadenza doppia, with a different chord or sonority on each beat of the dominant, should be played. One could realize bar 5 by playing a quarter note triad in the right hand on the first beat, a sixth chord on the second beat, and a cadenza composta on beats 3 and 4, that is, a 5-4 chord on the third beat and its resolution on the fourth beat. In this realization, the F sharp and the A in the bass in the first half of bar 5 act as passing notes. While this manner of realizing the cadence in bar 5 is defined according to the regular harmonic rhythm in quarter notes, one could decide on speeding up the harmonic rhythm by playing a cadenza doppia instead of a cadenza composta, with a different chord or sonority on each eighth note instead of each quarter note. As for the first half of bar 5, one could apply the obvious texture with the stationary note in one voice and parallel thirds in the other. Alternatively, one could realize this bass according to the ascending rule of the octave, with the appropriate chord on each eighth note. Let's listen to the uninterrupted realization from the beginning up to this point. Let's skip ahead now to bar 9, where Fenaroli starts a new Moto del Basso that descends a third and ascends a second. Another way of looking at bars 9 and 10 is by interpreting them as a metrically shifted fonte, with the C sharp and the B on the bad half notes, whereas in a regular fonte they would have appeared half a bar earlier on the good half notes. Note that these bars also illustrate an important feature of Partimenti, that is, the alternation of what Gerdingen calls interesting and boring passages, a feature that has a far-reaching influence on the realization. In fact, this type of bass implies an imitative setting in which the upper voice takes over the interesting passage in the appropriate key above the boring bass. <laughs> From bar 12 on, Fenaroli introduces the moto del basso that descends chromatically. A common schema today also known as a monte. Still, the partimento pupil is faced here with an interesting challenge. Whereas the bass of the moto starting this partimento changes every beat, the bass of this monte changes only every half a bar. 
In order to make this passage work musically, the right hand should compensate for the possibly somewhat static harmonic rhythm. A couple of suggestions for how to realize it. First, one could introduce sevenths on the second beat of bars 12 and 13, which resolve to the sixth on the third beat, and diminished fifths on the four beats of those bars. Secondly, one could lengthen the sevenths on the second beat of bars 12 and 13 by a quarter note, turning them into suspensions on the middle of those bars, which resolve on the fourth beat. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that it will help you to improve your partimento skills. For more tips and tricks on how to realize partimento, don't hesitate to check out my other videos.